Hi there, it's Wednesday the 20th of March and today we're going to attempt the Telegraph's cryptic crossword. Um, I've done a few of these now and I don't know if you saw yesterday's video but I, I suggested a tactic that you could do if you're new to crosswords which is trying to identify maybe the anagram clues because they're easier to spot. So we're going to do that again today. Um, and also I'll include two other types of clues that we'll look for in the first pass which are the hidden word clues, there's nearly always one or two hidden words, and um, and then maybe a homophone clue as well. These are clues that um, where you're looking for words that sound the same or are spelled differently, and I'll show how you can uh, identify those as well. Um, so before I start, just to reiterate what I say at the start of every video, especially if you're new to cryptic crosswords, that pretty much every cryptic crossword clue, there are some exceptions, but the vast majority of cryptic crossword clues um, are made up of two parts. There's a definition part, which is nearly always at the beginning or the end. In fact, it is always at the beginning or the end of the clue. And then there's some sort of wordplay. And this wordplay also gets you to the answer. So you've got the definition that gives you the answer or the wordplay that gets you to the answer as well. So in essence, you've got two ways of getting to the answer. Um, so in a way, it's easier maybe than a, than a straightforward, just pure definition crossword. Um, but the way the, the setters write the clues can sometimes throw you off the scent. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's, uh, let's get cracking with, uh, with this one. So we're, we're going to quickly go through the, to go through the whole, um, grid and just look for either anagrams or hidden words or homophones. Okay. So let's, let's get cracking. Um, four across, which says four across, done first of all. Fancy. Um, I don't think this is an anagram clue. Sometimes fancy can be um, an indicator of an anagram. But in this case, you know, we're looking for a three letter word. I don't think it's, I don't think it's an anagram actually. Um, so let's go on to eight, eight across instead. Evil pals concocted concocted something to ward off the chaps. Eight letters. Um, I think this is an anagram clue. Um, and the reason I say that is this word here, concocted. So that implies, you know, making something up. So we're going to make something up with certain words. And like I said at the beginning, the definition is either at the beginning or the end of a, of a clue. Because concocted here is here, I think this is going to be an anagram of evil pals. And it's going to mean, so the definition comes after the wordplay, it's going to mean something to ward off the chaps. And I'm more confident that it's, a, it's an anagram because of evil pals has eight letters and the answer has eight letters. And this concocted, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's an anagram indicator. So we're looking for an anagram of evil pals that means something to ward off the chaps. Um, I think this answer is lip salve. So here we have an anagram of evil pals, and it means something to ward off the chaps. Now, chaps in this case, I think you're talking about chap lips, um, as opposed to chaps, as in males. Um, this happens, this is something as well they look out for in crosswords a lot because they use homonyms and words that are spelt the same but of different meanings. Um, so have a think to yourself as well when you're reading the crop, crossword clue. How many meanings can I think of for these particular words? And that usually can help you. Because a lot of the time the setter will, will use a word that maybe has the same spelling but has two or three different meanings to throw you off the scent, especially when they're when they're comp compiling the, the actual clue itself. Um, so there we are. One first anagram is down. Evil pals con concocted is an anagram of evil pals, and we get lips out. Okay, let's try a nine across. Um, halt manuscripts extract for film director. Don't think this is an anagram clue. Uh, there's not an anagram indicator word here. You get words like mixed up or fancy or concocted, as we just saw, um, or transposed, or, you know, there's lots of different, there's hundreds of anagram indicators, actually. Um, but I think this could actually be a hidden word clue. So, as I said before, the definition is nearly always at the beginning 
or the end of a clue. Um, and there's a word here that's indicating where the definition is, the word for. So for and from are two important words in cryptic crossword clues. They tell you where the, the definition is. Usually after the word for is the definition. And before the word from, you get the definition. It's not always the case, but it's a good rule of thumb to look at to start with. So we're looking for a name of a, of a film director or a word for a film director. And the reason I think this is a, a hidden word clue is this word here, extract. So we're looking for an extract from Halt Manuscripts. And it's going to mean a, a film director. So we look in the, in the word Halt Manuscript and we're looking for a, a hidden word. I think Altman is the name of a film director. So I'm fairly confident that that's the answer in this case. So I'll go, just going to type it in there. So, okay. So two out of the three clues we've looked at so far have been anagram or hidden word. So a good start. Um, next one, 10 across. Crime that I cracked. It's not all adding up. So where is the definition? Where is the wordplay here? Um, and notice we also have a question mark. It's not always, it doesn't always mean anything. Sometimes I just put it in there because it scans better in the clue. Um, but a word is giving me anagram. Again, we're hitting the anagrams quickly here. The word is giving me an anagram indicator here is cracked. You know, we're cracking up some words to make another word. So that would mean, I think this is probably an anagram of crime that I, and it means it's not all adding up. Um, so it's a definition, um, is, is not all adding up. So a, a, um, a, an anagram of crime that I, I think, is arithmetic. And arithmetic is definitely not all adding up, is it? It's the subtraction and all sorts in there. So I'm happy with that. So we have, the again, anagram indicator cracked. So any word to do with destruction, mixing up, confusion, upset, about that, those sort of words nearly always are anag anag anagram indicators. Okay, let's move on then. So 11 across, um, sun beginning to wear glasses in capital. Don't see any anagram indicator there. Also don't see any uh, hidden word indicator. That tends to be a word like some or somewhat, or as we saw before, extract. Um, and we haven't mentioned homophones yet, but there's not a homophone indicator there either. They tend to be things like we hear or in the auditorium or um, they say, something like that, where it makes it sound like it's something you have to hear. Okay, so 11 across is, is a different type of clue, so we'll move on. 12 across, property in spacious car. Again, no indicator of anagram or or hidden word or homophone here. So we'll move on again. Um, one pauper leaving Portugal, possibly Spanish. Um, I don't think, I don't, this, there's not a, it's not a hidden word, it's not a homophone. Could potentially be an anagram. Um, and I'm saying that just from this word here, possibly. Um, it could indicate an anagram. You know, it's an eight, eight letter, so which maybe means Spanish with a question mark is the is the definition. Now that, that question mark in this case could be, I've seen this before, maybe it means, it doesn't necessarily mean a, another word for Spanish, but maybe it's it's something that a Spanish is also. Um, so this could be, I'm just counting the letters here. We've got three and six is nine letters. But then we have this word leaving here, which maybe indicates we're subtracting a letter from somewhere. And, and an, an abbreviation for Portugal is P. So maybe we take a P out of one pauper and make it an, and make an anagram of that. And it means Spanish, or not doesn't mean Spanish, but could be referred to as you know, Spanish could be referred to as such. 
looking at this now, I think this is European. So let's just recap how we got there. Um, the definition is Spanish question mark. So it's, as you can see, that's not necessarily a definition of Spanish, but it does indicate a Spanish person could be indicated by being European. They're also European. Um, then possibly indicated the anagram. And it's an anagram of one pauper. With leaving being another word that indicates some sort of wordplay. So we're taking a P out of one pauper, removing one of these P's. And then we're making an anagram from what's left and we get European. Okay. Right. 15 across then. Maybe Susie is close to vet. One treating caning. Question mark. Um, don't see that as being anagram. No anagram indicator there. No hidden word indicator. No homophone indicator. So we'll move on quickly. Um, Transpose final couplet in Shakespeare sonnet. Question mark. And a transpose could potentially indicate an anagram. Which would then make Shakespeare sonnet the definition. But it's got a question mark here, so sometimes that means nothing, but sometimes it could mean something. So like just like a, a Spanish is a type of European, this could be something, you know, if let's say this was the Shakespeare sonnet question mark could be, you know, what is Shakespeare sonnet a type of, the type of poem, for example. I don't, I don't think this is a, I don't think this is an, an anagram because I think the definition is at the beginning and the wordplay is, is happening here. So let's move on. It's not jumping out at me as an anagram or a hidden word or anything like that. 21 across. Speech in late summer. Kept back by actress Jessica. Again, do you see any anagram indicators here? I don't. And I also don't see any hidden words. Or any homophones. So again, let's, let's knock on to the next one. I police officer. Quietly ejecting student. Again, no homo, no uh, anagram indicator or any homophone indicator there. Um, there's definitely the quietly is gonna. I'd say there's probably a P in there somewhere from the musical notation, but we'll come back to this later on once we find all. Let's find all the anagrams and the hidden words and that type of thing first. Um, 25 across, was too late in the auditorium for a film. Aha, here we have a classic homophone um, clue. This is a classic homophone indicator in the auditorium, so it's how you would hear it. You, know, it's, it's, you have to sound it out. And there's that word for as well. Um, so for is indicating this film is the definition. So this means it's a it's a homophone for was too late, and it also means film. So it's a word for film that sounds like was too late. Um, now let's go back to my advice from before. When you see a word like film, how many meanings of film are there? Obviously, there's an obvious one, and the, and the way the setter is trying to guide you to it, they're trying to push you down the road of thinking of films as in, you know, movies. But you also get films which are like a thin covering of something as well, don't you? So it could mean that, as opposed to a film. And it means was too late. So it sounds like something in the past tense. That's a word for, that sounds like, that's a word for a film. We were too late. Was too late. I'm actually not sure, but this is definitely a homophone though. 100% this is a homophone. Maybe we'll come back to it when we've got some more letters. Maybe something will jump out at us. Um... 26 across, still lacking proposal at the AGM. 
not a homophone, not a hidden word. Don't see any indicators about uh, anagrams either. So let's move on. 28 across, noisy Brexit years in bars. Um, this could be a homophone indicator, noisy. So it's, you know, as you hear the word out loud, um, so it's a word that means, so that means the definition is here, bars. But it's a word that sounds like a word for Brexiteer, for Brexiteers. And Brexiteers are leavers, aren't they? So I think this is, so you don't spell leavers with the A, you take the A out, because it's a homophone, but you write the word leavers. Which can be defined, you can define bars as leavers, can't you? So I'm happy with that one. Do you see how that's a homophone? Two words sound the same, spelled differently. Cool. Nice. 29 across. Former news chief. Eating sweet fulfilled. Don't see hidden word or any anagram indicator there. So let's move on. 30 across. Rise of Rocky character is nonsense. Looking back. Rise of Rocky characters. Um, this interesting. I mean, see some things like looking back is definitely an indicator of reversal, not necessarily anagram. Sometimes nonsense can be an indicator of anagram. We're looking for a three-letter word here, so it must mean rise of Rocky or rise of Rocky character. It's not an anagram, I don't think. I think it's a word reversal, so we'll come back to that one as well. Um, okay, let's go try the downs and see if we can find any. Nerves rely and relax briefly. No anagram indicator there. What's this one? Oops is at regularly lost is over ear. Well, wow, that's a, I can barely say that. That's a bizarre clue. But not an anagram clue or a hidden word or a homophone, as far as I can tell. What's this one? Perhaps roses for yuppies. The definition, based on what we've said here, is yuppies. Again, not an anagram. Writer experienced U.S. jail. Not an anagram or homophone or, or hidden word. Um, Perpsichorean. Cared about entertaining night. Now, about can indicate an anagram, but it can also mean coded as re, as in you know about something, re something, um, or it can just mean flip the word around. Um, if it was an anagram, so if it was an anagram, then the definition is Terpsichorean. Um, I'm looking here at the clue letters we got. We got A, C, and R, which are in cared. Now night. Is a chess term, isn't it? The setters of cryptic crosswords love chess abbreviations, and knight in a chess abbreviation is the letter N as opposed to the letter K. So I think we put a letter N in with the word cared, which is about. And the reason I say we put it inside is because of this word here, entertaining. So we got the word cared is entertaining knight. So an anagram of cared is entertaining knight, as in it's got an N inside it. And I think this is Dancer. Just from the letters we got there. Something in the back of my mind tells me Terpsichorean is something to do with, is a dancer? Is something to do with dancing? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm happy with the wordplay there. That that's right. Um, okay, let's try. Let's move on. We'll come back. If these don't fit, then we may have to re relook at that. But let's go on. Um, six down roundabout in Petersham bad for air question mark here's our friend the four which then leads us to think the definition is air again 
question mark sometimes mean they're not playing by the rules that the whole clue is some sort of pun or they're trying to be funny um but there's an anagram indicator here which which word do you think is the anagram indicator it's bad because you could look at it as a roundabout as well but i think it's bad is the anagram indicator so we're looking for 10 letters here. Now, how many letters are there in Petersham? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 letters in Petersham. So now we have to have a word for, or a letter indicating a roundabout in the letter for Petersham and an anagram, which means air. Now, a roundabout is circular, isn't it? So a lot of the times, any reference to circle or zero or whatever can be a zero, can be an O, sorry. So I think we put the letter O in with... Petersham, and we get a word for air. And that word, I believe, looking at the let clues letters we got already, is atmosphere. Okay, so hopefully you can see using this strategy of going for clues that you can maybe easily identify or easier than the other clues anyway. Already you can see the you know, the the grid has got we've got lots of clues with two, three, four letters in there, so. It should make it easier to, to to solve when we come to those clues. Let's try seven down now. Protective wear over trousers for those holding post. Don't see any anagram indicator there. Or hidden word or homophone. So we'll move on. Twelve down. Friend saving fine Rhode Island ruin. Ruin sometimes is an, is an anagram indicator, but I'm not sure what we're ruining here because we only need three letters. Um, interesting, I've noticed so far that we've had a few three-letter clues and they've all had an anagram indicator in them. We had ruin at 12, 12 down, we had fancy in a four across, and we had another one as well, didn't we? What was the other one we had? Oh, maybe not, maybe it's just two so far. But yeah, but I think they're, they're trying to make it look like an anagram when it's not. Crafty, these setters sometimes. Okay, let's try 13 down then. We have great hotel breaks. Everything included. Could this be an anagram? Hmm. Well, we have a word like breaks in here. So the, the setter's trying to make us think of break as in like a holiday. But it could be, we could read this as breaks. So we could break great hotel. And then we have a word that means everything included. We got 10 letters here in great, great hotel. 10 letters in the answer. Good chance this is an anagram. Just having a look here at the letters and see if we can make something of Great Hotel. Everything included. All together. All together now. Nice. Did you see how we got that? That breaks was the anagram indicator. So the definition is here. And the wordplay is here. Great hotel breaks. Nice. What's next? 16 down. 16 down we have. Checked cotton fabric cut up. Um, do we see an anagram here? Anagram indicator. And cut up could be an anagram indicator. Which would mean the um, definition is checked. Then cotton and fabric, I don't see where we make the anagram from that, so I don't think it is. Um, no, we'll move on. I don't see any hidden words there or homophones either. Okay, so let's try 18 down now. With no introduction, pop medley, awkwardly, taken on. This is screaming anagram at me, and the reason is this word awkwardly. It's used a lot as an anagram indicator. So where is that? Where's the definition then? A 
pink. This is the wordplay here with no introduction, pop medley, awkwardly. And the whole thing means taken on. Um, so taken on. Now what does with no introduction mean? Well, I'm looking up, we're looking for an eight letters here, but pop medley, for example, has nine letters. But now it's telling me with no introduction. So I think maybe we take a P off pop medley. And we make an anagram of up medley. And it means taken on. And when you're taken on, you're given a job, right? You're, oh, you're employed. That's an anagram of employed. Nice. Not nice typing though. Let's try that again. Okay, great. So the, the, this is again just to recap. Awkwardly was the anagram indicator, and then we have a bit of wordplay to get the take off the introduction, as in take off the first letter of pop medley, and it means taken on. Good, nice one. That was another three-letter word now. Um, raised first of readings on sin. Don't see an anagram indicator there. No destruction going on. Nothing awkward, no upsetting. Don't see a hidden word. Nothing saying some or somewhat or extract. Don't see a homophone. Okay, let's move on then. 20 down. Watch Sky for this item that follows the news. Again, as the previous one, no indicators of anagrams, hidden words or homophones. So we'll, um, we'll move on. 22 down. Cam ostrich question mark. Not quite. Not quite. So does this mean cam or does it mean not quite? Is it an anagram, a hidden word, or a homophone? It's definitely not a homophone. Not an anagram either, because I don't see any things is could it be a hidden word what well, the reason i'm thinking that is because it's not quite business here the movie is not quite all the letters and it could mean not quite so if this is the definition if not quite is a definition then we're looking for a hidden word in here and i see one almost which means not quite that's definitely the right answer there. Cool. Now we're on to 24 down. Less demanding because I learn periodically. This isn't an anagram clue or a homophone or anything else, so we'll move on. Last one, 27 down. Bore, bore, not here to support liberal. No, not an anagram, not a homophone, and not a hidden word. Okay, so we've gone through the whole grid, as you can see. Look how many words we've managed to get from anagrams, hidden words, and homophones. So it's pretty, I mean, the, I'm feeling quite confident about the rest of the grid now in terms of being able to solve it, because we got quite a lot of, you know, words very well, you know, started and populated. Um... So let's go back to the start now and just go through what we've got and see where we can get to. One down. Um, nerves lie and relax briefly. Lie is one of these words you see a lot, like I mentioned before. You know, a homonym. Though this is maybe, yeah. This, does this mean lie as in lie down, which is what the, the, the setter is trying to put you into? Think of lie and relax. But it could also mean lie as in, you know, not tell the truth. Um, and this word briefly indicates some sort of wordplay on relax. You know, we take, um, we take, uh, you know, part of the word relax maybe with a word for lie. And it means nerves. I 
think this is wait right, another word for lie. If we go for the not telling the truth is fib. So if we put fib in, I think this is fibers. So where does it res come from? That's that comes from here. This this part of a, a word for relax, but it's a brief word for relax. The word for relax is rest. So we have fib from lie and then relax briefly. So we take, don't use the whole word for relax, or which is rest. We take off the T and we get fibers. And that means nerves. Yeah. Happy with that. Right, this one. Oops is at regularly lost is over here. Now, this is definitely an indicator of some sort of wordplay regularly. Nearly always means, you know, look at the, second, fourth, sixth, eighth, tenth letter of a word or words. Um or the first, third, fifth, seventh, and it's one or the other. And then lost is also indicating some sort of word play, so we're taking those letters away. Um which would make me feel that this is where the word play is happening. And is is indicating that the uh, the definition is is this end here, which means over here. Now, the whole thing's written like proper. I, I probably should say this in a Cockney accent or something. It's quite spivvy. But I can't really do that. Oops, so that is over here. That's my terrible accent there. But I, looking at this now, I think if we look at the if we take away the reg the regular um letters here o e if we just concentrate on the if we get rid of those we concentrate on the other ones we get p s s and t I'll write it down here so maybe it's easier to see p s s and t Psst. which means over here come over here Psst. okay that's a nice clue I like that Let's try three down now. Perhaps roses for yuppies. So this is, the definition is going to be yuppie. So when we see perhaps, we're looking for maybe a word that maybe could describe roses, but also would mean yuppies. I think this could be climbers, because roses are climbers. And I suppose yuppies are Upwardly mobile, aren't they? Young, upwardly mobile. Can't remember what the rest of it was for. <laughs> but quite a, maybe I'm showing my age now that I know what a yuppie is. Um, but climber is definitely a rose. So this is like a double definition in a way. So we got roses and also yuppies. C could be used to describe both climbers there. So not really, no major wordplay there. Just two de uh, definition, double definition. Let's try four down. Writer experienced U.S. jail. Um, four, three. So what? This could mean writer. Again, this looks like a double definition. It could mean writer. And then experienced U.S. jail. Um, a writer often is a pen. So I'm thinking pen is here, maybe. No, but that would maybe account for the jail part, wouldn't it? As well, like U.S. jail. U.S. jails, you know, pen is a way of how they describe jails, and it's short for penitentiary, I think. So maybe we need a word for experienced here now, and then the whole thing means a writer. So if somehow I got writer from the, um, yeah, this is felt, felt pen. Just looking at the letters to see what fit. So felt pen is a writer. Felt can mean experienced. If you felt something, you experienced it. And then a U.S. jail is pen. So again, this is a double definition. We've got writer. The whole thing means writer, and it also comes from experienced U.S. Well, U.S. jail. Okay, now we have. Let's go four across. Four across. Done. First of all, fancy. Well, 
what's giving me a vibe here is this first of all business. So if we take the first letter of these, we got the F and the D already. So it must be an A in there. Bad. Means fancy. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Let's try seven time. Protective wear over trousers for those holding post. Protective wear. Well, we got the four here, which is again, if you go with my rule I told you before, four usually indicates the definition comes after it. So we got those holding post is the definition. Um, so the word plays protective wear over trousers. So it looks like we have a word for protective wear on top of a word for trousers. And all together, that means those holding post. Who holds post? It could be like a postman, a mailman. I suppose the mail part could be protective wear, as in chain mail. So that could be the beginning of this, could be mail. And now we're looking for a, a word meaning trousers. Ooh. Not 100% sure of that. Come back. Come back to that one. But you can see the over here is basically indicating, you know, this word is over that one. You see that a lot in down clues. Um, let's try 11 across. Sun beginning to like wearing glasses in capital. Sun is very often abbreviated to an S. Like is very often abbreviated to an L. We've got the L here. And then it, so if, if sun, the beginning to like, well, we actually have the beginning to like. It's saying not even like being uh, abbreviated to L. It's the beginning of the word like giving us an L. Um, that's here. So if we had sun there, then this looks like the definition is capital and it looks like Oslo. Oh. And why is it Oslo? We've got the sun and the first letter of like here, wearing glasses. I suppose you put two, two O's together, you get what looks like you're wearing glasses, doesn't it? It looks like a pair of glasses. That's where they get there. It's quite a nice clue. But like that, two O's as a pair of glasses. Cool. Okay, let's try 12 across. Property in spacious car. Well, I know a spacious car is an estate, isn't it? And, it's, and, and also estate could be a way of describing your property. So I believe that's a double definition. Um, and it's much easier to get these now, now that we had some letters from the previous uh, little par pass that we did. So, but I'm happy with that. That's definitely a double definition. Let's try 12 time. Friend saving fine Rhode Island rune. Hmm. I'm not sure. Can't see saving in the I mean, a lot of times that the. The verb indicates the wordplay. So it's probably friend saving buying Rhode Island, and it means ruin, maybe. It's only a three letter word. I don't, I'm not, not sure what we're meant to do with that one, to be honest. Let's come back. 15 across. Maybe Susie is close to vet one treating canine. Um, I think, I mean, just what's jumping out at me here is canine. Um, again, I'm looking for, looking at canine, it can mean a dog, obviously, but it can also be a tooth. And one treating a tooth would be a dentist, and dentist definitely fits here. Um, so I'm thinking, there's a Susie, there's a woman called Susie Dent on TV in the UK who 
works in a TV show called Countdown, so that's making me feel this is dentist. Something wrong with my typing today. D E D E N T I S T. There we go. Dentist. Hi. Okay, so let's let's look at the wordplay now to make sure that's right. So maybe Susie. So it's a an example of a Susie is a dent because her name's Susie Dent is close to vet. Now, I've read that it is close to vet, but it's actually close to vet. So we got the is from is, and then the close of vet, as in the end of vet, is a T. So that's how we get the dentist, but it also means the definition is here, one treating canine. Okay, cool. Um, 17, transpose final couplet in Shakespeare sonnet um, it's got a question mark so maybe the setter is trying to be clever here I think from what I said before I think this means transpose um, a sonnet let's look at the letters a sonnet is a verse maybe this is verse here Well, it looks like reverse, doesn't it? Now, why is it reverse? Well, to reverse is to transpose, definitely. Um, final couplet in Shakespeare. So we've got this verse is coming from sonnet. Where does the RE come from? Final couplet in Shakespeare. Okay. If you look here, the final couplet in Shakespeare. So a couplet is what something of two things. If you look at the last two letters, the final couplet in Shakespeare, we get re. That with the verse gives us reverse, which means to um, transpose. I like that's very nice. That's a cool clue. Okay, let's go to twenty-one across. Speech in late summer kept back by actress Jessica. I don't think this is going to mean Jessica. So the the definition must mean must be speech. Um, and the wordplay is going to be late summer kept back by actress Jessica. Well, the only Jessica I know is Lang. Jessica Lang. So and there is a G here. So this that would mean the speech. It must be language. But where, so Jessica Lang, is her name, is it Lang got an E on the end? So then we've got late summer kept back, so someone's reversed here. Oh look, we've got AUG, which is August, isn't it? Which is late summer. It was late summer if you're in, in my part of the world anyway, in the UK. I suppose if you're if you're in the southern hemisphere, that's not necessarily late summer, but this is a UK crossword, so I think that's where they get it from. So we get Lang, Jessica Lang, and inside Jessica Lang, we have so it's kept Aug for August, but it's backwards. And we get G U A, get language, nice. Okay, let's try. Oh, we try twenty five across. We're back to that. Uh, that homophone. No. Still don't see it there, to be honest. Let's try 16 down. Checked. Cotton fabric cut up. Uh, I think the definition here is going to be checked. Because this up is tell me that's a word play. As in, you know, is this is a down clue. So someone's going up. We're probably reversing a word here somewhere. So this means checked. Looking at the word, the letters we got here, um, a word is coming out a lot, coming at me is uh, examined. It is past tense as well. I've checked. Let's put it in. Let's just put it in, and then we'll look and see if we can make it. 
if we can confirm it with the wordplay, which is why cryptic crosswords are cool. Sometimes, you know, you can guess the from the definition, but then the wordplay can confirm you're right or wrong. We just have to get to the, you know, from that from the wordplay now. So what have we got? So that means cotton fabric cut up. How are we getting to that? So something is up. Something's definitely reversed. Oh, look. You can see here. D-E-N, denim. That's the cotton fabric, isn't it? Denim. And then we have axe backwards as well. That's cut. Okay. So we have cotton fabric, cut, denim, axe, written backwards, is examined. Nice. That's a lovely clue. I like that. Very satisfying. 25 across. Um, was too late in the auditorium for film. Here we go again with this. Uh, what word have we got here? I think this is a word that means film. It sounds like a word or too late. A film, a film. Again, I, I could say I don't think it's a a movie. I think it means you know, covering lint. That doesn't mean too late. Um, is it missed? Missed? Yes. Yes. I think it's missed because obviously if you if you were too late, you missed. Your train, you were too late. But a film could be a mist. Yeah. Hundred percent. That's that's right. That's nice as well. Okay. Twenty six across. Still lacking proposal at the AGM. Question mark. So I think this definition here is still. Word for still. I'm thinking. Mm, not sure. Let's try 23 across. See. I, police officer, quietly ejecting student. So there's some indicators here of wordplay, like ejecting. Again, it's the verb in here. So maybe, and I think there's a P in here somewhere. Um. It means I. So that means the definition is I. Looking here, I think this is peeper. Another word for I, isn't it? So how do we get there with the wordplay? Um, P. Okay, so we have a a word for police officer. Is a peeler. Um, named after peel. We've formed the police. Um, and then what happened is quietly, which is um, in musical terms, is P. Or piano, and that's ejecting student. And a student is often abbreviated as well to an L. So we're getting rid of the L, putting in a P, and we get paper, which means I. Nice, cool. 24 down, less demanding because I learn periodically. And where's the definition? Where is the wordplay? A word that um, smells highly of wordplay here is periodically. It usually means a bit like regularly and and alternatively. It means like take alternate alternate letters, which means it probably means less demanding. Um, I'm just looking here. If we take the B C U, that doesn't mean anything. Let's try E A. I'll do it here so you can see E A S I. E R so periodic letters of alternative letters of because I learn we get easier, which means less demanding. Cool. So that's good. So the definition was less demanding. Nice. Um, shall we try? Let's try thirty across. We got a letter now. Rise of rocky character is nonsense. Looking back. Hmm. Not jumping at me. I'm going to jump on to twenty and see. Watch sky for this item. 
that follows the news. Sky, there's something on TV. What follows the news? What would you look at this guy? Where is this guy? I'm trying to throw us off just by giving us a capital S. Follows the news. What follows the news? Oh, the weather follows the news, doesn't it? And you look at the sky for the weather. Nice, that's a cool clue. I like that. But the, you notice here, though, it's basically a double definition. You know, you watch sky for this item. So you watch the sky for the weather. And it also follows the news. It's like the weather report usually follows the news, doesn't it? And so that means the sky, they just put a capital S in there for, um, to throw you off. Although the whole thing makes sense as well. They called and, and lit, uh, clues. Um, nice. Let's try 26 across now. We've got a lot more letters here. 26 across, still lacking proposal at the AGM. Okay, I think, I do think this means still. I think this is motionless. So what's a, what's, um, if you're lacking something, it usually ends in L-E-S-S. -S. I had the S there, it made me think of that. And also a proposal could be a motion. If you're lacking a proposal, you're motionless, aren't you? But that also means still. So that's why we get motionless. Um, again, a double definition. We got still and then lacking proposal date and AGM. With a question mark there is just a way of saying, you know, if is this a way of is this a little pun here? If you're motionless, you could say you're lacking a proposal day and AGM. Okay. What's this one? Bore not here to support liberal. And liberals are very often uh, abbreviated to an L. We see the L here. And when we see to support, especially in down clues, that usually means, so that, that would make me think the word plays here. So to support usually means that there's a word underneath something. So we can see a word underneath L, which means the definition is bore, um, which is like not a great person, is it? So I think this is light. So when you're not here, you're out. And Light supporting the L of light gives us a bore, a, lo a light. Let's go. 29 across. Former news chief eating sweet fulfilled. Um, former news chief. Former nearly always is uh, abbreviated to X, EX. There's lots of e E's in here, but, you know, that would mean that if it's here, that means this part of the clue is a wordplay, which means this part of the clue is a definition. So this means fulfilled. So probably end, based on the ending, fulfilled, I reckon this word also ends in a D. Um, and former is usually X. When you put those in, that word looks like executed, which would mean fulfilled. Now why, where do you get it from the word place? Well, former is the X part. Um, a news chief is an editor, Ed, and it's eating. A news chief is eating sweet, so the sweet must be cute. And then the A, E, D, the news chief is eating, as in it's containing, um, a word for sweet, which is cute. Okay, we're nearly, well, we're nearly finished here. Um, 30 across. Rise of Rocky character is nonsense. Looking back. This looks like Tor. A Tor is a, is a, a you know, a small outcrop of, of Rocky outcrop, isn't it? And I suppose do we get that from nonsense. Looking back. Rot is another word for nonsense. Looking back means it's been reversed. And we get the definition then of rise of rocky character. So a hill of rock, a rocky, a rocky hill, I suppose. Two clues left, three clues left. Um, 12 down, friend saving fine, road island ruin. This is the end. Um, 
Okay, I see what's happened here. Look, we got friend, and then we're getting, we're taking out the F, the R, and the I of friend, and we're leaving end. So saving as in without, you know, if, um, as opposed to keeping. Yeah, so the definition is ruin there. Cool. Let's try seven down again now. So protective wear over trousers for those holding. So I think, as I said before, the definition is those holding post. Um, this is ma mail bags. Bags is another word for trousers. I haven't heard them called bags in a long time. Definitely another word for trousers. So we have protective wear, which is mail as in chain mail. Over as in on top of. A word for trousers, bags. And it means for those holding posts, mail bags. Cool. Which leaves 19 across, 19 down the last one. Raised first of readings on sin. Um, this looks like air, doesn't it? Cool. Okay, we got there. Nice. Let's go back to the uh, thing and work out why air is air. So raised indicates something's back to front, you know, upside down. First of readings is an R. So we could first of readings. The definition is sin. So on is been is re R E. I don't know if you're doing a an S E on something or doing an S E re something. So we've we've got R R E. Let me go back to what I can't seem to click on that anymore. Um R R E raised gives us E R R. And that's how we get there. Okay. We got there. That's quite a long one today, but hopefully that's you can see how using that strategy. Like I think the most the obvious type of clues to see in a cryptic crossword or the identifying a cryptic crossword are anagrams, hidden words, and homophones. And by doing that we were able to, you know, put quite a lot of the letters into the grid, which then helped us with the other types of clues to identify what was going on there. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do like and subscribe. The channel is literally eight days old now. I'm loving doing these um, videos. I'm also doing some little shorts on specific little clues, and I'm going to come up with some um, more videos just to explain different types of clues and how to spot them. Um, but if you like and subscribe, that would be fantastic. And uh, I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.